this is me Daniel and doing another uh, digital illustration um, hybrid creature so I'm joined by Daniel line hey guys and Steve with the sound coming through as you can hear yo guys Woo! what's going on um, <laughs> I was thinking of a theme like we could talk about things um, talk about stories or something that Creative stories in the past. Once upon a time. Woo! So, um, yeah, today I'm doing a skunk owl. I've already laid down sort of the background, uh, so that's my drawing, and then I'm converting that drawing into a digital painting here uh, with a few layers. So, yeah, just get into it. That really looks a lot like. Is it. Hinge work or the the owl from Harry Potter. Oh yeah, watch. is it Harry Potter's owl? It looks like it. Here's a snow owl. That's yes, all I know. it's um based off a the owl's based off a snow owl like this one here. Um, will pop up That's in a still. minute. <laughs> oh, you'll see it in a minute. It'll pop up. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone else, yeah, just everyone else watching, watch. Everyone watching will be like, what are you talking about? This, the skunk was like, you put up the skunk like a minute ago. Hello. No. Are you sure? It, but then it'll be yeah. like, because it, it's... Hello, like... guys, I have to read this just to, um... Mm -hmm. Peter dictates to his computer. He prefers it to typing and particularly refers... Oh, prefers it to pen and paper. Pen and paper. Yep. Thank you. Kill. Cool. You're welcome. <laughs> Why is that? No, that's wrong microphone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, wonderful. What wonderful professional stream again. Mm -hmm. Woo! Welcome to our professional show with lots of laughter. <laughs> uh, we'll get better at this eventually. And noises eventually. in the background. Eventually, yes. <laughs> Uh, chaotic streams. Streams are usually fun to watch. Yep. They're fun. As long as you have, like, a good yarn, I sure someone will watch and listen. Um, yeah, it's, uh, at the moment, getting people to watch live is, uh, very difficult. Well. Well. That's not right. That's something I was actually going to look at. Because you're doing pretty, pretty well, considering you've only really just kind of started these um, like full time lately, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Like I've been doing, um, I've been doing three, roughly a week, on YouTube. So you guys can watch three a week on YouTube here, and the others will be on my Twitch streams. Yeah. So, well, someone that's just started, it's it looks like people are definitely coming to watch, and, and that's a good thing. That that's definitely a good thing. Oh, welcome. When I start off, I yeah, no. Welcome. <laughs> it's just a hard thing to advertise because um, yesterday I was trying to do the whole um, event thing on YouTube. And that just got real complicated, like you had to have um, pre-recorded stuff. And then I was... Yeah. Yeah, I was hearing that... Well... The, well. What? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> and the pre-recorded stuff, right, um, apparently that comes out really bad, like the quality, because it's already been recorded, and then it comes onto the channel as a re pre recorded as far as I know. Well okay, um Steve. Welcome new uh, visitor. Yes. With your channel yeah. how long did it like what, what how the many channel. views do you get generally um, or did you get on some of some of your last videos? Just just, you know, thinking about it. Because you got like you were getting like in the twenties, weren't you? Like some of your videos or more. Best that I got was seventy-two views. Ooh, seventy-two. Uh, and 
Oh, he's gone dead for yes. a while. He's back. Yeah. Yeah, same. Uh, for like a yeah. year. I was doing it for a year. Yeah. About. And then I just kind of stopped after that. Because yeah. I tried to yeah, do a and... video vlog as well. And stuff. But, yeah, it was Ooh. just kind of a consistent kind of thing. But yeah. then I opened up like a two other channels as well. So I have a montage channel and then a channel for my uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. And my montages at the moment, they're going really well. Well, that's good. But I only have one video. Yeah, montages. <laughs> like, wait, wait, wait. I have to see like how many views it has now. It's has two thousand four hundred sixteen views. Jeez, Jeez that, that, that's still well for a starter oh, thing. And it has um a lot of comments. On it. Check out Steve's montages. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, eventually, I'll find something that people like. Because <laughs> yeah. I've done had like one or two videos with like one hundred and fifty views, but they were Call of Duty or uh, Fallout Four. Yeah. That was it. A lot of gaming ones. <laughs> okay. I think the key to doing that is getting like a song that everyone's searching at the moment. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The song that I did was a bit popular. It's a bit popular at the moment, so. Yeah. That's the thing you can, um. You can go for the popularity. Like, kind of like how Deviant artists and artists around the world, they kind of, it's, um. Yeah, it's just all about keeping in the tune. Yeah, they tune into like lots of things. Like, as soon as I. The world heard of Overwatch. I saw thousands of Overwatch fan art, and it's still going on. There's heaps of um, Overwatch fan out fan art coming out every day that everyone seems to fanboy and fangirl over. Yeah, because it's a good game. Mm. Good game. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, I was talking about having um. Do you talk about stories in your life? Um, so this, this is owl stink. A, sk a skunky owl. You don't want to. You don't want to be around with when this um, owl. <laughs> is it's got near. a bit of a scowl. <laughs> so it's egg. Huh? It's a rock. Oh, it could be an egg, oh, right? He could. No, no. It's <laughs> going to be an egg now. Daniel. It was a rock, but now it can be an body, egg. And, 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 well, 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 body to owl egg ratio. Yeah, well, It is um... worse than a kiwi <laughs> laying an egg. <laughs> yeah, no, well... Kiwi... Hey, hey, hey. No, what happens hey. with these this, <laughs> these owl creatures is uh, the mother and father leave the egg with the kid to look after. Uh -huh. And the kid has to teach the baby owl skunk how to live. Oh my gosh, a story. You really tried with this one, aren't you? You really tried to make it. <laughs> oh. Once upon a time, there was an owl, and it gave birth to an egg that was twice its size. Scout, technically. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, or. Angry as well. <laughs> angry is not scowl. Oh, that's a a scalk. Could be a, a scowl. Scowl. But yeah, um, maybe maybe every time it lays an egg, it gets twice as big. Twice as angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because um, cause, um, skunk owls just hate everybody. Yeah. They're just violent, violent, violent owls that nobody likes because they stink all the time. Violent like, owls. Really. Yeah. Definitely. How Imagine that, flying it. skunks. They can uh, fly the skink every, uh, the smell everywhere. <laughs> so, are you gonna go for, um, are you gonna go lineless once you've drawn it more, or, because I've noticed you've, um, taken out some of the, um, the line work around the edge. Yeah, nah, I was, like, I was talking about this yesterday. Um, I've worked out that I, I'm pretty much, basically, um, start off with the outline, and I'll convert the outline into a painting. Um, so...
So eventually the outline just disappears gradually. Um, maybe some of it is still vis visible. But yeah, um, and I've gone off. Oh, Daniel can't hear you. you there you go. Talking. Yeah, I was, I was, was I pretty much <laughs> saying that I convert the the drawing into paintings. Um, pretty much, it's gone offline. Oh, now it's uh, stream resumed. Just the stream is continuing. <laughs> it's not liking it today. Yeah. I think, yeah. But yeah, um, basically, I just convert the the drawings into paintings. Um, a bit more right. so you don't see the line, it's more just tones and um, structure and everything that you see. Yeah, yeah, no, I can understand that. Mm. Yeah, because your, um, your videos and stuff have pushed me to start doing a little bit of um, work myself. Um, for me, it's oh, just good. I had an, had, an old, had an old drawing of a, I did uh, earlier in the year of a dragon and I've been... Um, Slowly vectoring it. Yes, I saw that. Was that that was on your page? Yeah, you just posted it. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, one of my dragon drawings I did for our course. Oh um, yeah. To pass. So, yeah, I've. It looks a lot better than 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 what what you've seen as well because I found I needed to convert it to a night scene because um the lighting. That that's one big thing I use for my ones is. Um, I love the reason I love working with Illustrator and uh, digital um, illustrations is shadow and being able to work out shadow, even though mm. it's painfully hard sometimes. Yeah, trying to get the shadows right. Um, I think it's probably the best one of my, one of my most favorite things, and probably one of the reasons I personally kind of stay away from more digital painting styles like yours. Yeah. Okay, so oh, yeah, you, no, no, no. you, what, you prefer traditional painting or you prefer... Uh, more, more vector. Vector line drawing, basically. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, see, I used to it's... use, when I started out, um, I used to use a lot of line. Yeah, Nine. yeah. Um, but I just wanted to really push um, getting into realism a bit more. And with realism, there's no line. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, and this is how, that's how I created my style. I tried something um, to push my level up. Yeah, and it, it, you can definitely, definitely see the um, the realism in your work. Because mm, um, you man, you generally managed to blend the, the um, animals well so perfectly. Mm. And for doing I was like, I, I can't. I, mm -hmm. I can't do realism. I'm I'm not good enough for that. So. Uh, yeah. What about what about you, Steve? What's what? What 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 is your preferred style of drawing or art or whatever how like Daniel's is did like painting and and more realistic yeah lineless style of art and mine's more of a computerized vector style what's yours you must mine's have a style more, um, perspective kind of black and white kind of style mm. uh, yes yeah. perspective yeah because um with my engineering background, um, I always like doing perspective. Yes, yeah, so I can relate to that. Architectural um, techniques with perspective drawing. One point so, or two points? Um, um, all the points. All the points. Point, two point, three point. <laughs> three point. There's, one, yeah, three three point. Three, there's three types of um, point perspective. So you got the one point, which is more centered. Um, mm. To center into the eye focus, and then you have the two point, which shows a more um, 3D aspect of it. And then you got the three point, which is kind of like doing if you want to do a real depth kind of um, perspective. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, screw that. I'm, I can do one and two because I did um, 
um, gr- we call yeah, it yeah. graphics at my school, which was yeah. the inaccurate word. It was more. Well, they they taught us two point. They taught us to up up to two point perspective and yeah. It was the stand. Three point perspective. The standard gone off. Yeah, it's gone down again. Um, but yeah, uh, like high, like high angles. Oh, I see. It's three point. Um, interesting three point. Um, thank you. I I learned a lot about you know one point and two point at school as well. Um, and the other one was you know about oblique and uh, what's the other one? There's another one. Oblique and obscure. I think it's obscure. What do you mean? What what for? Um, for drawing, uh, there was. Are you talking about the three the the two different three D? Um... 3D perspectives, or there weren't points. Um, so there were two other ones that were called. There was one called oblique. Um, and isometric. And yeah, isometric and oblique. Those were the oblique. two. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, I was always. I think I was always more for isometric. Mm. Because I, if, if I'm correct, oblique was the more skewed one. Whereas isometric was the more triangular one. Y- yep. Yes, but the circle. I, yeah, I think it's the circles in the isometric that really, really got me, really annoyed me. Oh, they're hard. It's yeah. hard to draw circles. Whereas, <laughs> whereas an oblique, you can draw a normal circle and you just, yeah. you just uh, skew the back of it, skew the, um, gotta, the length of it. Yeah, you got to draw the circle in um, quite an obscured way, which really got me off yeah, every time. <laughs> yeah. But it was so come on, you have to admit it was always so satisfying when you when you drew a circle in iso in um, isometric um, drawing styles and it looked good. Yes. And it just oh, it just felt so good. good. So that's why a lot of my work, um, if you've noticed that whenever I've drawn anything three D, it's um, which I have a habit of doing, I always draw it more of a isometric. Yeah. Because I don't like the way um, oblique looks at times. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I was just talking about stories. Um, I have a short story I could tell. Um, so basically, when I first started out at the Palmerston North School of Design, um, they didn't really know me that well because I just started and you know I was just uh, learning and doing my tasks that I had to do, and I decided. They called everyone in, I think. I'm not sure they called everyone, um, but mostly a lot of people to sit into a um, kind of like a client. It was called the Cliffs Project. Mm. And every year they would do this um, Cliffs Project, um, which is a concert that happens every year. Um, so they had a meeting of it. I uh, came in, um, as I do. And I just sat there, and they're getting all excited about this project. And I'm pretty sure after it was after the meeting, I got called in by one of the tutors saying, and she told me that I couldn't do it because um, I was only year one student, and that really got to me. So I ended up just um, kept on working along, and a few you know months went by, just. Designing away, um, taking away every project. I was always like a project ahead of everyone, almost at at times. Wow. Yeah, I was like that. And then, um, then a month or so later, there was another one, and I, f- I was the only year one. I'm pretty sure I was the only year one student to have a uh, like a a client project to work on which was similar to the Cliffs but it was different I think it was called it was another concert that was happening in the year anyway and they, I think I think that's helped like um, you know it's a story to tell you if you keep on progressing if you keep on pushing you can get something quite nice out of it every time 
Yeah, yeah, I can understand. Yeah. Have you, you got any uh, stories to tell, Daniel or Steve? Kinda. <laughs> There's stuff I can talk about, and that's not the most phenomenal. Phenomenal St- stories, but it, it more or less explains me as a designer. That's for sure. Yeah. What about what about you, Steve? I don't know. <laughs> I am too young. So, well, so what are we specifically talking about? I'm just still trying to anything. get like any anything, any story, experiences. stories or experiences that have helped you out, um, or something well, related to design. Yeah. Well, um, Ooh, well, I've only been in like into design for the last three years. Yes. Because uh, previously my main goal was to be an engineer, mm. mechanical engineer. Okay. And uh, after um, I did that for how long did I do that for? Two years, and um, so I had my first job as a mechanical engineer as a welder. Ooh, uh, awesome. And then uh, so building trailers and sketching out know, trailer designs and all that. Um, and building them, and yeah. then after that was just a year and a half contract, and after that I went to the army to attempt to uh, get a job in the field engineering role. Yeah. And uh, so I went and tried that out, and gave it a go. Uh, I didn't pass my basic training, so then I had to come back home and uh, find out a new. Um, plan for myself. Hmm. So then I was looking around Wanganui and um, whatnot, and looking for stuff to do, and I found uh, Ucol, um and got shown around Uco in the graphic designs course, um, yeah. and found a interest in uh, 3D modeling. So I joined up the course to do 3D modeling and to focus in that area. And since then, it's evolved. I've evolved into um, gaining an interest in uh, video compositing and video editing um, to 3D modeling and level design in video games. So mm. it's changed a lot since. Yeah. Um, yeah. From just being a mechanical engineer, and it just shows you like what what many paths you can take, you know? Mm. Definitely, definitely. Mm. But yeah. Why well, it's probably quite early, but do you think that um, you found you find the right path yet? Sorry? You f- you're finding the right path now? Well, I'm definitely enjoying, like, free modeling and design far more better than I did um, engineering. Yes. Like, I'm totally interested in it, and, like, it's a passion of mine and stuff. Like, with engineering, not only that I didn't pass in the basic training, but um, I did get kind of bored with it at times. Yeah. So, yeah, um, because I it, would get, it would get to that stage where it just began to be repetitive and repetitive. Mm. Because there was stages where we would just go into a production stage. We would, we would go into, uh, like, how can I say it, like a factory kind of mode. So yes. we continually make the same thing over and over and over again for a time. Mm. Um, and that would just get boring after a time. So um, part of the reasons why I went to design was um, I thought it would be a great way to start doing things like a new thing every day kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So far I've enjoyed it, you know, and I think this is the right part for me. So mm. see what's in store. See what's in store. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um. Any any questions? Got to be something in the background. Yeah, you know, an egg. An egg. The egg's blue now. Is it a Pokemon egg? <laughs> it's a, yeah. It's a Pokemon egg. Um. <laughs> yeah. His main. Um, Skull. What? It's <laughs> what? A scowl. A scowl. scowl. A scowl. What are you going to name it? Is this is going to be a scowl? Yeah, scowl. Uh, uh, no, no, it doesn't work. It, it, 
Uh, no, Doesn't no, work? No okay. No. Why not? It's not a scowl. It's an angry skunk owl. It just, it's just an aggressive name. Exactly, oh, yeah. it's a skunk owl. It doesn't look owl. aggressive though. Get frowned. It's, it's a friendly. It's a friendly. <laughs> It's, it's a friendly white it's blue. It, that's not the colors of aggressive colors. It means another Blues. name. Yeah. Um. Owl. 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 Owlick. Owl. Owl. Lunk. Owl. Owl. Lunk. Maybe. Um. <laughs> the stink owl. The stink owl. Stink owl. Owl. It's stink owl. <laughs> That's terrible. No, it's not terrible. The terrible <laughs> owl. owl. A skunk owl. Simple. Skunk owl. Scout. Skunk owl. There you go, skunk Scout. owl. You don't need to shorten it. It's like a type of owl. I'm shortening it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Scout cow. Scout Yeah, I mean, I've kept it as Scout Cow. Um. Okay, okay, fine. Be way. It's. I mean, it's a nice name. You can't. Uh, I'm joking, I'm joking. Sometimes you. you <laughs> I've tried lots of these things. Sometimes that you, if you try go shorter, it just doesn't work as nicely. Yeah, as... yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> so I'm just layering as usual. Um, you might notice during these different streams, I'm get yeah, um, slight changes, maybe. Um, Changes. Slight changes, like um, like I'm improving almost. Like if you, I've definitely, definitely improving. Yeah, like if you saw yesterday's the taper squirrel, taper squirrel, taper taper weasel, taper taper weasel. Um, this is a good one. Do 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 do. <laughs> Come on. <Welcome. laughs> Uh, it's, not, it's not the door, it's, it's uh, everything not desired. Oh yeah, yeah. Guess, 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 guess I should probably talk about myself. I just clicked. You guys talked about yourselves. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, no, it was just, I was just thinking about what you said and um, Stephen and my ones. Kind of similar, but I'm probably the odd one out out of us, to be honest. Because... What do you mean? For me, it was, I started off in what I thought was graphics, but it wasn't. It was more product design mixed in with architectural drawing. Oh, yeah. Um, and not a lot of graphic design actually itself being really taught that much. Um, oh, so okay. originally, I actually um, found my passion in architectural drawing. Because I loved using the programs to make it and build it, and which would eventually build up into my love of 3D modeling. But the thing you need to understand with me, as you guys probably already know, is while I joke about my attention span, one of my biggest weaknesses, as I've probably said before, is the fact that if I don't enjoy something, I generally have a insanely hard time doing well in it at all because I said I no focus. Yeah. Unfortunately, which is a massive problem sometimes. So uh, when I went into the design course after going to school, I, to be honest, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was kind of just doing it for the sake of doing it because I wanted to be a designer, but I didn't know what a designer was and I didn't know what I should do and what real designers do. Pretty much I didn't know anything other than I could make basic 3D models. Yeah. Because, you yeah. know. Um, even though I've, I've, I've been looking into it and I finished my school in 2013 because I took an extra year but and I'm pretty sure I had I had a year off but if I finished schooling in 2013 and 
I took a year off, but I've been in design. For, I've been in this course for three years. Mm-hmm. That doesn't work. I was doing the maths, and it was like, like what? Two years, three years. You've been three years. It's it's been... Three years, yeah. I've been doing it for yeah, three, three years, years, and I yeah, finished must... my school. My last, my last year was in 2013. It must have been 2012 then. No, no. I've got, I've got a. Um, Documents somewhere say saying 2013 or something. Oh yeah. So well, what, I don't know. High school. I, I don't know. I might have read something wrong, but it was just like, what? Okay. So what? So I'm a little bit confused about my, my school. But yeah. Um. Anyway, sorry. Distracted. I'm easily distracted. Um. No, I went into design not knowing a damn thing a, at all. Yeah. Um, and so when I'm on my first year, as you guys know, I've oh, I I flopped horrifically, flopped horribly, because I went into the course and I was like, oh, oh, geez, um, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't know how to do any of this. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I didn't actually, I didn't actually enjoy the course. Um, at all, I kind of hated it, but you know, I'm spending like seven thousand, seven grand on a course. I'm gonna um, stick with it. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't really until I had to restart that I actually started enjoying it. And um, then this year, when I found out that I could actually start doing three um, D modeling and with that stuff, I found it even more enjoyable. But I genuinely didn't think I would kind of take a liking to vector design this much. Yeah. Because, to be honest, if you're not in the graphic design world, you almost have no idea what that is. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if many people haven't just don't know what vector mean is whatsoever. Because I didn't, I certainly didn't have any understanding of what what it was supposed to mean before yeah. this course. Definitely. So yeah. I was kind of the, I was one of those people that was definitely not a designer in any way whatsoever when I first started, um, and it's taken me years, and I'm still not even really there, so um, some people are definitely born with graphically minded design minds, with design minds, and other people like me yeah. <laughs> have to try to um, kind of learn it later in life because we've been idiots and forced ourselves into a, into a, a course that Daniel. weren't really yeah Use flash we're all still learning yeah no, that's, we, uh... not, that's not what I mean though like originally I can easily say it wouldn't have been my thing because yeah. I just I, I'm not generally I wasn't that creative I like being creative but Unfortunately, I'm not that creative at times, which sucks. But yeah, good crazy with, enough. With, with you guys, like I watched you guys in your first year, or what, your second year, or whatever, or um, and design, and you guys just clicked. Yeah, I could, I could see it, see it, guys clicking. Or I watched, look at, looked at my mates who were in CAD, um, in my year now, and. You could tell that they just clicked. Mm. Whereas for me, it didn't. It, I didn't click in my first year. It wasn't until probably my um, a, a little bit, a little way through my second year that it actually kind of kind of clicked. I kind of worked out what I what um, what to do, what I was doing with my life, or how I was doing it. Because what really scared me was the um, publication project originally. Yeah. yeah I never thought a I, tough I, one. I never thought I'd have to do anything like that. It was a tough one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely was a tough one, yeah. yeah I didn't enjoy yeah, laying Daniel, it out. Yours was so tough, Daniel. What? Like, yours was the hardest, hardest publication I've ever seen made. What was that? Yours was the one you, 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 you um, got... Uh... Wait, was this a gestalt publication? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine was... Yeah, yours was so hard, Daniel. Yours was the one that you got... Um, turned into a book by the printer. A book. Yeah, no, it was an easy book. 
The book <laughs> just, just, just everyone came up with these crazy ones, and then there, there was your one that looked good, but it was like, oh, I didn't realize that we could we could just just let the printer bind it. Oh okay. yeah, well I I did bind it myself. I just used um, the downstairs binding machine. It, it, like it was an easy, simple uh, ring binding system. That I thought, oh yeah, use this. So I'm not going to use any other <laughs> binding at the moment. <laughs> oh, it was, it was so so. Yeah, heard heard all, like the years and in, in this year, my year now. Talking about when we were doing it, talking about all their how they'd been taught when they were in CAD about um, all these different binding techniques and stuff. And yeah, yeah. <sighs> Once again, I regretted everything that I had no idea that there was a CAD course I was supposed to do before. Mm. I was seriously a blind fool that just walked into it thinking oh, I should do this oh, wow. without any research. Moral of, moral of the story, do your research, kids. Do your research. <laughs> know what you're actually, actually getting into. Because I just thought, oh, design course, I can do modeling. Mm. Nope. But <laughs> nope. you learned something from it. Oh, oh, it's been uh, one of the most important classes I've had. Courses yep. I've had, to be honest, because I did not do well in school in parts. Mm. In parts. Yeah. Just didn't click. Mm. So I still don't get why our course doesn't uh, provide um, basic level modeling and earlier years. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah, I think they need to focus more on the modeling. Cause because, yeah, basic the modeling. They skills. only have. They only have one semester dedicated to modeling. Yeah. Yeah. I, Did you like, find that you much... had to um, practice um, the year, the whole of the break prior to um, before modeling? I just went with it. I just studied on. Um, I just started studying on the semester. Mm. But yeah. after that, I felt like I needed more, like at yeah. least two semesters. Okay. Yeah. Focus. At least. I can make something because basic. Just, like a... Yeah, there's just so much to learn on it. Mm, and I'd yeah. say. I achieved so little in that semester. Um, but yeah, because I pretty much only made one little thing. Uh, yeah, um, I yeah. found that I've had to practice during the breaks because just just yeah. you know one one semester of um first semester ever of like first time ever using maya um i'm seriously having to do lots of had to do lots of modeling um in my own time and i i am now probably when i when i um pub finish um uh, my my victor image on my dragon draw i'm doing i'm going to go back to mm -hmm. uh, modeling but i just find that i can't I, I can't just just leave it up to the course like i have to do lots of practice mm. in the break because currently yeah, i yeah, can yeah. Definitely. I'm good at making model um, items and objects like swords yeah, and yeah. stuff. That's what I learned in the last semester, because that's what I did mostly for my degree project. I was pretty yeah. much just self-teach myself everything yeah. in the yeah. degree project. Like I wasn't like all you called did was pretty much just supply me with the tools that I needed to learn it. Yes, like, they didn't actually much. teach me like how to do that. <laughs> well, it, it's like, crazy. I learned how to use SketchUp. I use I learned how to use Unreal Engine for all by myself. SketchUp's handy as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was just easier to use. Um, yeah. Um, but it's, yeah. It's nightmare for circles though. When anything requires circles or a curved object. Yeah, it's anything like... that's like organic shapes and stuff. Don't use SketchUp. I used to do that back in the day. If it needed a curved shape, edge, I would spend weeks on SketchUp back in the day. Creating. <laughs> I made these bullets for someone's um, YouTube banner back when I thought it was cool. Um, yeah. I wasn't. Um, and I, I made the, these bullets um, that were yep. going through the shadows of glass and I spent a week or so just just, just crafting this bullet and crafting like, the curved edge of the bullet and stuff. Oh, it took so long. And now mm. coming was it SketchUp? Yeah, and SketchUp, yeah. yeah. It wasn't designed for it, but I could, do, I could get it to do it. Mm. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, and now come into my which is less precise. It's 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 less um, not as stuck to rules and restrictions, but it's way easier to mess up. Yeah. Okay. Much easier. Well, if you're going for an organic shape, you might as well make a um, 3D sculpture of it rather than a, you know, 
Uh, yeah, I don't know how to do 3D sculptures or anything yet, though. I can only um, work with boxes and, yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. Because, it, it's, once again, it's self-taught, because I did animation this year, not modeling. So yeah. I'm probably doing it wrong, but... Well, I think a lot of it is self-taught. I don't, you know... Um... Well, it's... I found it was very, very different, just just in mm. my own opinion, compared to the way everything else. Like, we spent, like, how many years? Like, like two years, almost like two years, teaching us, or one and a half years, teaching us the basics of of design. Yeah. So intricately, and, and teaching us the de- deepest parts of type. And that's yeah. going to um, scan forever. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and then it comes to animation, and... You could tell they were just, it feels like they're struggling with, with that area because mm. you kind of need to know what to know what you want to do before you, you go near it. And it's like, it's sad. I can understand, but yeah. it's sad. Well, I don't know. It's, it's very hard for them. There's a lot of, a lot of them that don't really know much, too much about um, 3D modeling. Yeah, it's- most of them are more um, um, arts, BDA um, teachers than um, computer graphic design teachers. Yeah, if I had to start again, if I could go back and like select my study um, path, I would actually go to Auckland mm. and go really? to the media school there. Yeah. Is There's a, a media school there that's focused on, um, you can do a course that's focused on actual video game art. Oh. Yes. And uh, modeling and stuff, and there's actually a number of students who have gone to like Bungie and stuff, and got jobs overseas and everything. So They're going to an actual yeah. course based around 3D modeling. The only reason, the yeah, only, I was considering going there, but the only reason why I didn't was because of the cost. Yeah, far more expensive. And oh, it's yeah, in, it's and, in... um, it was further away from home mm. and everything. So I thought I wouldn't have for that myself, but yeah. Yeah, I did want to go to that course because I started out wanting to, you know, um, design game designs and things like that. And I was really into 3D design. If you've checked out my DeviantArt, there's a lot of 3D work I have done before. Yeah, you've yeah, shown sure, me. Um, but I just, I'm now I've just given up on 3D design because it's, um, I don't know, it's not my thing. Um, I mean, I wouldn't yep. mind like getting making a three D model. I wouldn't mind it, um, but after I've got a basic shape, I'll probably just end up, you know, painting it on Photoshop or something like that. I don't mind doing things like that; they'll be awesome. Um, but you, uh, yeah, the same thing. It was way, it was way too far away. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to afford living there. Um, mm. Oh. But I would have even um, like there's no one apart if you're doing unless you're doing like BDA or something. There's not really many people um, that know a lot about painting. And same with I don't know if there's anyone at the BDA that do you know digital painting apart from like um, a couple one or two tutors that might know a bit about digital painting. Oh. Well, I guess in the end, even though this course isn't just about um, 3D modeling, I think it's a general course that's almost essential for uh, um, anyone wanting to go anywhere near design. I think you need to do yeah. a course like this before you go think about anything yeah. specific. Mm. I think I, I can't afford I... another to do another course, but it's yeah. enough to get you started. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think the variety is good because then it opens up more doors for you in case you can't like get into the um, thing industry that you yes. want. Because then, yeah, because now I like have more open doors to like new editing as well as video game design. Yeah. So that's um good, you know, in a way. Mm. And talk show hosts. <laughs> and talk show hosts. Talk show hosts. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, apart from that, I think the other biggest challenge is to actually find a job. 
<laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a challenge and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the real world. Um, <laughs> that's why YouTube and DeviantArt and all that kind of stuff is awesome. Yeah. As long as people actually like your stuff. Um, yeah, it's still... I find with DeviantArt, I still have to feed it. Um, like my pet at the moment. You know, you have to you have to post okay. something nice every day. Um, I did something really good, but you know, I don't want to do anything another one. But you need yeah, to, yeah, yeah. you yeah. need to. That's why I'm finding different methods personally of of keep getting me moving and, and trying to keep me active. And I think I think you just gotta put in like a long term plan before you start yes. it. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, but um, that, that's also what I would say as, as a designer advice for any any new people wanting to get into it yeah. and wanting to um, struggling with motivation is if you're not doing anything, this is me being hypocritical, but seriously, get out and do any kind of um, e exercise because even though it seems like exercise and design have nothing to do with each other, they pretty much have everything to do with each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's seriously, probably couldn't do any design if I was just in my room all day with doing absolutely no exercise. It's like just... I was listening to Bobby Chill the other day and he's pretty much he pretty much says you gotta get out there, you know, you gotta go to these events like um we just had this year we just had a um was it called the um, Armageddon mm. Is that the one? Uh, but we had a, a bigger one this year. With Comic Con and stuff. Comic Con and stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, you got to get out there and go to these things to get your name out there, even, and have like stalls at these places. and. Or just, just walk around them to, to swing mm. it all in, you know, if you have the money for it. Yeah. Sad crying face. Um, <laughs> student life. Student life. Uh, um, Armageddon's not cheap. But yes, yeah. that kind of idea. Um, and this is me being incredibly hypocritical, but if you're going to start doing a design course, start going to the galleries and the openings and stuff straight away. Yes. Don't don't think, oh, I don't need to, because you'll get into a horrible habit of not going, and then it's so hard to, to actually go to them because you don't know anyone at the Mint. And everybody knows everyone at the gallery openings now. And Yeah. Yeah, like... It's terrifying. Um, you know, approach galleries, approach um, anyone in your field, um, whether it be online, whether it be on um, Gmail or Facebook. Yes. Just keep approaching I think, these I think, people. I think a lot of face to face is, is crucial, though. Mm. I think face to face is essential. So as someone with quite high levels, seriously high levels of um, anxiety at times. I think face-to-face yep. -face is indescribably important because if you don't do it at all, then it comes to the times when you have to go face-to-face -to -face for various things in your life and you can't. Yeah. Mm. That's why I like the this design course because it's... Even though a lot of the stuff seems pointless at times and I eventually started getting sick to death of hearing other students complain. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's like... It's, it's handy. Okay, there are okay. There are some classes that that um, sorry, Andrea, Andrea, but there are some <laughs> classes that are terribly pointless. <coughs> um, design theory, which I think was a replacement for media studies. Um, other ones are really, really important. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah. We well, just turn up to every class, and that's the thing about courses is it gets you, it gets you there every day, um, rather than staying at if you work at home or stay at home. Um, I mean, I, I don't have any trouble, but uh, lots of people have trouble working from home because they can't keep themselves motivated. Yeah, there's so many distractions. I mean, best thing to do for that have your bedroom have your have your work computer not in your bedroom yes do not yeah. have it in your bedroom do not have yeah. it you in know your what bedroom. i think what make a cool 
as studio. <laughs> so that you never leave it. Because it's never so cool. It. Yeah. So that's the yes. biggest distraction. Make your work and your passion your biggest distraction. Yes, that's the one. Take out, also, take out things in, in the office that are wired set that... Distract you. Like, like a PS4. Things like, like, like for us, like for, probably for me or, me or Steve, it would be make sure there's nothing probably game-related in there. If you're a gamer, make sure it's probably rather empty. Yes, don't have a PS4 in your workspace. Otherwise you'll be thinking... Oh, PS4, or you'll see your bobblehead of Star of Darth Vader, which is my bobblehead, oh. and you'll be like, "Oh, Star Wars!" Um, yeah. And then two hours later, you'll be um, drawing a picture of Darth Vader oh, with this, a this um, fluffy um, Star Wars um, lightsaber. It's all about me, mate. It's, it's all, all right if me. it's all right if you draw fan art. That's fine. That's quite creative. But I was talking about me. I've got a, bob a Star Wars bobblehead. Yes, but draw it. I was thinking. If that yeah. keeps you drawing, you know, draw what oh, you yeah. love. Draw it. And... Yeah, but at the same time, you've got to, um, if you're working, you've got to focus on your work, and that's something yes. you should do in your spare time. That, oh, that's just what I mean. Like, Well, you have to really break up your time, and you've got to count every... Um, like we were learning in um, one of our uh, classes, uh, where we had to deal with clients, we had to record every hour that we worked, um, which is a great tool, because I think you should be able to use it a lot more. Um, if you guys can see me, um, you should be able to use it a bit more with scheduling um, times. And you should, if you schedule the times, so so I I have these videos, and I think, you know, I create them. I set this time. It's gonna be it's gonna be an hour video of me creating something. Um, that's a scheduled time for me to do something in the digital sense. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And in the, mor in the morning, because um, I don't have my daily drawings any anymore, I used to do daily drawings, so I used to do a doodle every day. Um, and now I, I've taken that away because um, what I am doing in the morning is doing some sort of drawing, whether it's doing, I'm learning at the moment, I'm doing schoolism, um, which is a great tool. Yeah, uh, I can, I can understand that it does make it so much easier when everything's planned and ordered, and, you yeah, know, you can, you can, you can muck around and have Rick um, do whatever you do in this time, but, you know, over here, maybe it's best if you work. Yeah, yeah, like, um, and the same with, um, one of the, one of the people that came to a, for a visit to our school said that play, 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 you know, um, play, play. Yeah, do, just do some time, whether it's, um, half an hour a day playing a video game, and then do half an hour of just, like, for me, it's, doodling half an hour a day of just rubbish and still experimenting and things. I was doing just yeah. I was doing half an hour ago I was just play, playing around with all these different um brushes that I've got and I've never never really used them but I'm starting to get into using brushes now. That's cool. Yeah I've noticed your art style's changing and for me, I don't know if you do it Steve, but like with me if I'm doing something and it is in some way related to a possibly a game or something that I have, like say I'm doing something fantasy and I have a couple of fantasy games, um, often I'll play a few minutes maybe or an hour or so on that to sometimes even help the ideas flow. Yeah. Uh, maybe even if it's watching a TV show that's along those lines or a movie or something, I always find, even though people consider that uncreative, I no, think it helps. It's, 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 it's inspiration. It's inspiration. Yeah. So if you want to, like, when I think of um, things for my projects and stuff, um, I always look and do like some, like what's happening, like for, if I want to make like a game level for example, what I would do is I'll immediately go into like, ask myself the question, what's the game market at the moment, like what's trending at the moment, what genres are trending, like, um, 
what games are popular right now kind of thing. And then um, I would look up those games and then I would actually play those games and find the feel of that game and try and apply it into my own project in my own way. Kind of yeah. thing, if you understand that. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it just applies to any other design as well. Like that's how we were taught in graphic design. Like just to find an inspiration, you have to find out like what's working at the moment, and then apply that into your own design, and then make it into your own thing, and then try and create something new out of it. And then yeah. you make your own, possibly. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how I do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But at, at the same time, I, I find it's also at the same time, it's also very, you know, you need to be careful um, to not try to be too influenced by outside yeah. sources. Yeah, yeah. Just plain. Like, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, keep original. Like, get an idea from someone else, but then apply it to your project and then recreate, like, evolve it. Yeah. Manipulate with it into in order to make it into your own kind of thing. So it's then change it. Yeah, just use so like for, elements and things, eh? Hey? Yeah, so for my example, like, for the um, Pathfinder level that I made, mm. um, what I did was I took um, inspiration from not just sci-fi games, but also fantasy games. <coughs> and I went... <coughs> No, like seriously, dude, that was really weird when they <laughs> said Pathfinder because I absolutely did not know that it was going to be. Do you fun. know the story about that, Nick? Huh? The whole Pathfinder thingy, because they explained it a little no. bit more. It's no, um, no, just just quickly, just just a side note. It's um, it's just just like the idea is that it's multiple people, a certain class of people that are going around. I think it's um. Because they said Pathfinder HQ in one of the trailers, so I'm like, oh, so it's a class of oh. people. Like, I think they're like scouts or something. Yeah, but yeah no, that, that that which makes sense. But yeah, sorry. But yeah, I'm yeah, just, I, I clear that out. Yeah, I came well, I came up with the idea, so I didn't get the idea from this. But, but yeah, yeah, it was just, it was just strange. But yeah, how I got um, the story concept for that was um, that or Egyptian kind of feel of it. Yeah. Um, I got, um, so the whole thing, the whole story behind that, the level that I made was, um, what if, um, Egyptian culture never died out? So if the Egyptian mm -hmm. empire, the ancient Egyptian empire never fell, but continued on into the modern age, into yeah. the future age kind of thing. And, um, it was just like, oh, well, take Daniel's illustration, for example, he likes combining different animals together yeah mm. and what I thought of was um, what if I combined different ages together mm. so I combined sci-fi elements with ancient Egypt and combined those together into um, so combined the ideas of sci-fi and then combined mm. the ideas of ancient Egypt and then combine them together and make them into an original idea so yeah that's one way of doing it Make but yeah, that's how I like doing it. You know what it reminded me of? What? Serious Sam. Serious Sam? It, What's it, that? it had that, um, not a kid's game, I've never actually played it myself, but um, mm -hmm. it's a, it's just a really, really vi violent shooty game, but it's got a really, <laughs> really deep um, Egypt, Egyptian aspect to it, and uh, oh, watch it playing your game and even the uh, like aliens invading Earth and, and Sam has to go around with terrible one-liners <laughs> murdering all these aliens and stuff. It's, yeah, it's a bad game. <laughs> bad game. And um, it just, oh, I'm saying your game, I'm like, oh my gosh, this reminds me so much of that. Hey, serious Sam. Serious Sam? Serious Serious, serious Sam. Sam. Serious Sam. Sam. It's um, the one of my the, the creators are one of my favorite um, creators because they made the uh, one of my favorite puzzle games called the Telos Principle. Hey. Yeah, I don't know if you know, but it's, it's it's kind of on the lines of Portal, but totally different. Ooh, 
so you got some tree back here. Oh, true. Oh, this is. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean now. It's got that real feel, that real vibe. It looks like Unreal Tournament in a way. I think that's kind of the idea that they're going for, maybe. Mm -hmm. Do that. 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 See, that's the kind of shading that just looks plain epic. I love what you're doing, especially on the egg. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, that's so. <laughs> yeah. You got a Tommy gun. Uh, I'm pretty much finished. Um, per se. Uh, today. Yeah, that's that's my jewelry. Right I mean, what do you what do you think? I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's uh, good. It definitely it's, looks uh, like, like a winter owl. Winter owl. <laughs> <laughs> With a tail. It looks like puppy tail. it does look like a, a, a owl and a skunk have just been like pushed together. Yeah. Like they've been cut in half and they've just been like pushed together. That, that's the way you do it. You just, a you just way of putting it. <laughs> you just... Well, how else would you how else would you put two animals together? DNA. DNA. How is that any any less horrific? Oh yes, I'll take a piece of your DNA. <laughs> because we're not DNA. cutting the animal in half. No. Two months, like like a year later, suddenly you have this little fetus thing that's saying, "Kill me," um, in a scientific lab because you you created um, unholy um, animal creations. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I've played way too many sci-fi games, yes, but you can blame Mass Effect and Dead, Dead Space for that. Well, that's what these are, though. What I was saying the other day is there's two animal differences. There's the chimeras, and then there's the um, the originals or the like, um, say per se, uh, mythical creature. I think that's a bit more. Mm. It's its own thing, basically. And this is yes. so. This is two animals mixed together, where as a, a traditional creature is something new, but it it's informed by real animals. Um, with this you know the good thing this. You know the good thing this time. It didn't turn into a terrifyingly messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the jackal it, 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 Some. It's like that every. What was wrong with the elephant? It, 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 I mean, <laughs> the elephant was fine. Which, was it? Was wizard? It just. Chris it Rolls just had some. Wizard. It just had some processes. Yeah, it was, it was Christmas themed. Um, and I love how it's actually your... Um, you actually went through with making it your um, mascot. Yeah, <laughs> he's my mascot now. I mean, oh, was he it? was the advertisement for this live stream. Um, just because I can. <laughs> um, you did it, it's awesome. Oh. Yeah, it's a bit more... It was a bit more easier today, I think. Um... But it's just with these animals, everyone's gonna be different. Um, there'll be different approaches, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because I love my birds. Um, I've really drawn birds, painted birds a lot. Um, so it became a little easier for me to really do this creature with. Um, that elephant, I haven't really done too many elephants, and it's a big creature in itself, it's got a lot of detail, a lot of texture and things to work at. Um, so, you know, every animal has their own aspect, um, I'm still learning as I'm creating these characters, yeah. Got anything else to say, Steve? Um, um, that's a good picture. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Um, no, it's good. It's good. good. Um, yeah. Um, any messages to the audience, gentlemen? No, I think I've pretty much said what I, what I wanted to say, which was far more rambly than we wanted, but yeah, still... we we got there. So uh, yeah. yeah, that's us. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, yeah, check out our other videos um, that we have. Uh, one that's more funnier. Um, we will have more coming out. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do way more funnier. Yeah, yeah, there's more. More. We'll make more eventually. Um, we might just have some funny ones one day. Um, 
It's just, oh, we can't help it. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah, just just like you know, a random, random drawings or something. There's something less focused, maybe. Um, but yeah, check out our channels um, in the description. Thank you for joining us. This is me, Sia. This is Daniel. Bye. 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 Thanks for joining. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Thanks.